All right, today is Sunday, June 23rd, and it is 42 degrees outside. 42, it is 7 a.m., and it is 42 degrees outside. I thought it was supposed to be like warm this time of the year. Anyways, we have had a crazy year. Multiple times we've had high winds. We've had winds just, just whipping and rip the leaves. As a matter of fact, in a couple of instances, I've had the wind rip my plants off at the garden level, at the dirt level, just rip the plant off. So I'm gonna show you my garden really quick. It's not pretty. Uh, I've talked to a lot of my neighbors. They've witnessed the same thing. It's just been a bad year. Um, makes me wonder if I need to come up with some way to cover the yard when we have um, high winds coming up, you know, to cover the plants and make sure they're safe. I suppose I could just throw buckets over the top of them. Um, but they would, might just blow off. So I need to think of that next time when I hear of high winds coming, find out a way to cover up the plants. But I'm gonna show you the plants really quick outside. It's sad. Um, and then we'll go inside the greenhouse and see what's happening new inside there. Also this week, we've had a couple of new guests, surprise guests. Um, one of my neighbors found a snake in the yard. It was hissing and striking at him. So I went over there and caught that snake and uh, turns out it was a rattlesnake. No, I'm just kidding. It was not a rattlesnake. <clears throat> okay, so I'm not trying to antagonize this snake, but I do need to pick him up to move him. So he's probably gonna strike at me because he just was hissing at me a second ago. But I do want to pick him up because I need to move him. He took the kids out and caught a bunch of tadpoles. So I'll show you some quick clips of that as well. Okay, I've got a cup of tadpoles here. We're gonna put them in. Um, but I'll put the, the post to those two videos, which are on my wildlife and travel channel, um, if you guys wanna see more about those. But anyways, let's check out the garden real quick. So you can see our little carrots are starting to grow. And then the rhubarb, we need to pick it again. We picked some of the bigger ones, but we need to come get more of those. And our onion's growing huge. And then you can see these two plants. They have just been beat up. And these are our spaghetti squash. And they're not looking good. Over here are the tomato plants. And you can see they've been beat up again by the wind. I actually replaced the original tomato plants with these new ones because the other ones, all three of them got whipped to death pretty much. Okay, and this is where you're gonna see the worst carnage. You can see my pepper plants. The leaves have pretty much been whipped off these all the way, my beautiful plants. Uh, my other little pepper plants that were in this location and that location, they just got ripped out, they're dead. So I put some little, uh, celery plants in their locations where they were and then of course if you look down here you'll see our two pumpkins they have somehow survived but they were they were beat up pretty bad the watermelon here as well you can see they've just been if you look down here at the roots they've just been beat up i don't know if these guys are even gonna produce or survive so it's been it's been tough my plants that were the biggest and the best were my, I have my like zucchinis over here and I put these blocks here to keep them from um, tipping over because they had been bent up so bad. So I put these blocks of wood to kind of help them stand up. And you see we've got some little flowers there but they just aren't looking that good. we got another one over here that I'm pretty sure it's dead and then another one over there so these plants, matter of fact, this one right here was our one of our biggest and best in the whole garden. And you can just see, it just it actually ripped it right off at the base right there. And so, pretty sure we're not gonna get anything out of that this year. And then right here, you do have my daughter's sunflower that somehow has survived. So anyways, we did the same thing. We used the blocks of wood to kind of help keep it from getting whipped around too bad. Okay, the last thing we're gonna check on outside here, you can see it behind me, it's my weed-free garden for the strawberry plants. I wanna show you how amazing this is. 
Um, I don't know if you've seen my other video about my weed-free garden, but if you're doing a garden, you've got to do it this way. It's amazing. So um, let me flip the camera around real quick. Okay, if you look in the box, you can see that the strawberry plants are doing awesome. They're growing really large. And uh, now to show off how awesome the weed-free garden is, if you look around the edges, you can see all the ivy growing out here. Matter of fact, I was gonna pick it yesterday and I thought I wanted to show you guys on the video. I mean, look at all this. This would have been growing into the garden. So I'm gonna pull it here in just a second because I don't want it getting into the garden. But um, be sure to check out my video on the weed-free garden boxes. So I thought I'd just show you on the weed-free garden boxes how easy it is to pull these weeds out. Um, I also wanted to tell you that I'd be lying if I said I didn't get any weeds in the box. Um, I was a dang fool and I put horse manure in this garden box so I've had to pull some weeds from that but um, I'm not getting any weeds that were already here so let me just show you real quick how easy this is. You just grab it and you can see the weeds are between the plastic and the wood and you just pull out like large pieces of the root just pull out and it makes weeding a super quick and easy chore. All right, let's go see what's happening in the greenhouse. Once again, if you remember, it's 42 degrees outside and inside the greenhouse, we've just left the door open all night long. It is almost 70 degrees. Okay, first we have the peach tree that we transplanted from outside because it wasn't doing well outside. You can see it looks like it's doing great in here. As a matter of fact, we even have a couple little peaches growing on this tree. So I just noticed a new one up here yesterday. So I don't know if I'll make it or not, but that's pretty cool. Down here, we just have two little cactuses that one of my neighbors gave me that he found outside. And then of course we have the two lily koi trees. I have to keep chopping them off at the top because they're just growing so tall. So I just trimmed these yesterday. And then here's the orange tree. Once again, I just trimmed the orange tree because it keeps hitting the roof, but it's, um, it's growing awesome, but it's not giving me oranges yet. And then the grapefruit tree right here, this one just hasn't grown this year. It looks like it's getting thicker, but I've not seen new growth yet. So still worried about this one. And then here's the peach tree I was gonna move outside this year, but it has just um, grown so fast and it's actually um, produced a lot of peaches for me. So I didn't wanna move it after I had started producing peaches. So if you look closely here, you'll see, you know, we've got actually two peaches right there. You can see a nice big peach right here. This will produce pe peaches really fast and my peach trees outside just have tiny little fruit on them. Here we've got the lemon tree. It was growing earlier in the season and decided to take some time off. It's looking nice and tall. It's growing straight, which is nice. And then I'll, I almost forgot to point out this little orange tree in here. And this little orange tree has finally taken off this year and started to grow. So we're looking really good on this orange tree. And then last, once again, we come over to the quick little lime tree that we've been working hard to straighten out um, what's cool about this tree is it's the first one to give us fruit. So if you look right here, we've got a tiny little lime growing. We actually have another one right down here, if you can see that. And then two more on this side of the tree. So we've got some limes growing in here, which is kind of cool. So over here, over here we have the two goji berry bushes. I'm just not happy with this experiment. I'm probably gonna sell these two bushes and move on. And then of course, right here, you'll notice this big cage. I don't know if I've shown this before. Um, this is just here for my kids. If they like to catch lizards or whatever, you can put them in here for a couple days or weeks and then let them go. Um, we're considering putting fish in this section of the greenhouse, but um, we'll keep you posted on that. Okay, lastly, we have are three cherry tomato plants that I haven't put outside yet. I may just try to keep these inside all year. We have our normal tomato plants here and a little piece of celery there. We potted all of these. And then of course, here are the carrots that we have growing. I've noticed as it's gotten hotter outside, these aren't doing as well. So 
I think I'm going to move these outside today. The fun thing about the greenhouse is that we get a lot of unique guests in here. And you can see this guy is hanging around, but hopefully not for long. I have no idea what kind of hornet this is, or if it's even a hornet, but it looks pretty dang scary to me. May have had the happiest moment of my life in the greenhouse. Uh, I noticed some little white things and I was like, what is that? And it looks like we have little blooms growing on here. Let me flip the camera around and give you a better view. It looks like we have a little bloom coming in right here, another one right here, and if you look up here as well, you'll notice another one up there. So we may get oranges off this tree this year. That would be amazing. Well, that's it for the day. I appreciate you guys watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or experiment suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Uh, other than that, we'll talk to you later. Thank you.